uh, I'll invite Dr. Naveed to talk a little bit about uh, the landscape around AI detection, um, plagiarism, and you know AI uh, generated content. Dr. Naveed, over to you. Yeah, sounds good. So first of all, this is a commonly asked question. Many people say, will text generated by PaperPal or other tools be detected by, you know, uh, plagiarism detection softwares? The answer to this, the answer is actually no. And this answer is not from me only. Many universities have now published guidelines where they're basically saying, don't use Turnitin to correct AI generated text. And I will just share my screen to just, you know, show one of the one, one example to you. So let's hide this here. So I'm on the Yale website at the moment. So this is a Yale website, the Yale University website, and they have guidance on the use of AI. So here they're saying controlling the use of AI writing through surveillance or detection technology is probably not feasible. Turnitin has acknowledged a reliability problem with its detection tool software, and Yale has not enabled this feature in classes. So coming back to, to that, as, as you all saw that, the, the, so in, in the past, what used to happen before generative AI tools is that uh, there were tools like Turnitin, which were trained on millions of papers. And whenever someone, someone wrote in like something, they compared that text with what has already been written. What's different about generative AI tools is that they don't use that text to write for you. They write something completely new, meaning they use combination of words to write things which are completely new. And it's very hard for a tool to detect that. So to answer you more clearly, I will, I will, I will, let me also tell, like go over what, what, what the process of paraphrasing is. Usually when we want to paraphrase we, we, with our brain, the first thing we do is we read the, the, the text, we try to understand it. After that, we try to find synonyms and see whether, you know, when we're writing this, instead of using a set of terms, if we could use alternate terms, you know, when we write. The other thing we people do is simplifying complex ideas. That's how you also par paraphrase. So instead of, you know, if you have read like two paragraphs, you could just write two lines to represent that idea. And the third way people paraphrase is to use alternate sentence structures. So instead of saying something caused it, you could say this was caused by this. You know, you could change the sentence. So this is how we paraphrase in our brain. What PaperPal and Genetive AI tools do is they do this process for you, like using software. You don't have to think that hard to do this process anymore. So think of it. So think of it as someone as like a tool that's assisting you basically and simplifying your your writing process. So if you're using text and using a paraphrase paraphraser to to rewrite it just think of it as someone you know as a as a tool that's helping you so the human plus ai combination is the best and when you use it it's very hard for for like it for a tool like turnitin to detect that as plagiarized content because in, in reality that's actually new content and it's original content so again to summarize use AI with your supervision. Don't let it run on its own. And when you use it with supervision, your content will not be detected by tools. And if you are very worried, you can scan your text through tools like Turnitin to just see. And there are some free scanners out there. Even ChatGPT had one, but they, they stopped using it because it was unreliable. Don't use those because they are unreliable. And uh, I hope that answers your, answers your question. Thanks. Um, I think that's that's a great overview of AI detection and you know how to really work with it. I think a lot of these tools um, are not as objective as you know when you compare it with the plagiarism landscape that's been around for really long. Um, Doctor Yunus, I have a question for you, and there are two of them that came in. Um, you know, 
what are the ethical issues that might be violated when using AI, um, you know, around students? And I think um, that's a that's a good counter uh, view uh, to what we've already covered. Uh, what's likely to come up, and how can you really manage it? Do you have any thoughts on that? Um, <clears throat> so, regarding plagiarism in in essays, uh, yes, AI basically, you know, violation of AI use. What could constitute, and how do you really handle it? I think there are two questions over there uh, around that. So universities in general their current kind of um uh, i guess guidelines is that you shouldn't be using any ai tools definitely not to uh to generate any text for you and you also can't be listing ai as an author or like having helped you within your like acknowledgements for example however i have actually seen quite recently there's a university in the uk a top university in the uk that says that you can use it for like proofreading, for example, where you're simply like enhancing text. And I actually saw this in a guideline at a university. So I think we're definitely going towards allowing it more so. Um, I don't think it would ever get to the point where they will say you can use AI to generate text, text and write the best essay possible, because that's that's crazy. But I think in terms of like allowing all the things that I spoke about, we've spoken about today within sort of um, the realm of enhancing text and making it sound more academic, that is, you know, a lot of that is just kind of overcoming overcoming language barriers. Um, if you, you know, you don't speak English as your native language, sometimes you just can't say what you want to say correctly. And how is it fair that you're being penalized because you can't express yourself in English? Um, yeah. And you know, AI tools can help you with that. So there's nothing wrong with that. And I think as a student, just make sure you're not copying and paste. That is my, if you take one thing, don't copy and paste, no matter where you get it from, don't copy and paste text if it isn't yours. That's the one thing to take away from that. If so you want to enhance the text, go for it. Just don't copy and paste. So that's a great, uh, great guideline. And you're, you're right. Um, we were doing some research and we saw the University of Melbourne basically talking about, again, how they had guidelines around what you could use it for. And even if you did use it, they asked to share prompts or more details on how you used it. And I think um, that's the aspect of, uh, you know, really looking at um, how AI can be used. So I think uh, really looking at what you're working on, uh, the context, uh, either the institution or the journal, I think having that understanding is important uh, getting into the space. Mm -hmm.